What's up, everybody, and welcome to my second ever Commander deck opening. Today, we are going to be checking out this one for uh, Caesar's Legion. I just opened up my first Commander deck ever, which was Scrappy One. Um, it's this right here, actually. And this is actually back to back. So if you have watched that video or if you haven't already, then just be warned, I haven't seen any feedback or comments just yet. I'm kind of just doing both of these at the same time because I got everything set up and ready to go. Yeah, you can tell I got my dog dog hair and everything there. But uh, yeah, we're going to be jumping into this, seeing what's here. Um, like I said in my last video, I never looked into any of these cards here. So all of these are going to be fresh for me. Um, I played all the Fallout games recently on my channel. We did a full Let's Play series of them. And I'm just recently getting into Magic, learning how to play the game. Uh, still getting familiar with a lot of cards, so I'm just going to be appreciating whatever is in here. I'm um, trying to learn a bit, get used to different card types. Some I've already recognized from my first pack opening after watching some Commander deck, uh, Commander playthroughs like Hey Money Wubby and Moist Critical. So we're going to open this up, see what we got in here, and then take it from there. If you guys end up enjoying this too, leave it a like really helps out a whole lot saw that the best way to open these is typically this one's a little bit tougher than the last but i've been trying to to watch videos and get a better understanding and so far i mean it's been pretty cool it's been a fun experience it's insane how many different cards are out there yeah, this one is not opening well Let's see if i can All right, there we go. I had a little bit more, use a little bit more force, but we got it. Let's see what's in here. I still find it a little funny how uh, I did not expect it to look like this in the last video that I did. I was wondering how it was going to, I thought it was going to be like, you know, yeah, the deck here and then other stuff. But I didn't realize there was more packaging, but here we go. So see everything's starting to fall out on the back the actual deck put that down got that how to play and everything we'll look over that too because we did that last time we've got the booster pack and this thing's always like open ready okay same as pretty much last time a bunch of punch outs that i'll throw into the deck after we're done here same thing with these on the back. Pretty cool. Place that aside there. All right, let's get to the good stuff here. So let's put this deck box together. I was able to do this last time. Clean. Goes through. Good. Nice. I don't know whether to like throw some music on in the background for these videos. If you guys have any suggestions like while I'm opening these, please let me know. Because, uh, like I said, very much a noob, still learning not only how to play Magic, but also how to do a little bit of content creation on it, too. Um, I mentioned in my last video, but I'm really only going to be getting or buying the packs or boosters that I'm genuinely interested in playing. Um, this is one of those because I, I love Fallout. And then there's also some Assassin's Creed stuff coming out soon. So I will be doing some videos on that too, since I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan. But let's see, we got the Booster Collector sample pack. Let's see what's in here. Take a quick look. One day, maybe I'll get an actual booster set. But for now, we're too early on to do all that. Sentry bot. Okay. Cool. Artifact creature robot. Flash. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature attacking you. When sentry bot enters the battlefield, you you get... Um, I'm not sure what that one is, actually. For each creature attacking you. The beginning of the combat on your turn, you may pay... I guess those might be tokens, energy tokens or something. You do put a counter on T. Okay, cool. 
And then Keeper of the Accord, Creature Human Soldier. Beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more creatures than you, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. Beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more lands than you, you may search your library for basic planes card, put it onto battlefield tap, and then shuffle. Those are two little extra cards. Actually, I kind of am doing this different order. Oh yeah, this is the life counter here. Pretty cool. And I didn't really do a zoom up, but here's the box that you get. The deck box. This one's a red, a white, and a black. I love how that they come with these. I didn't know that until like the video I watched last night opening up a different commander deck. All right, let's take a look at the actual information on why this is red, white, and uh, black. Go on, actually, side. Hail Caesar, playing the deck. When resources like food, water, and protection are scarce, you want to be the one in charge. The NCR, Mr. House, and the Legion know this well. Assemble your army of raiders and soldiers to overwhelm your competition. Squad mechanic returns, allowing you to create additional token copies of certain creatures. With so Caesar, Legion's Emperor, as your commander, you can sacrifice Legionnaires tactically to seize victory. With a little bit of luck, Mr. House President and CEO can create a robot army. Their firepower is unmatched when summoned. Who might you align yourself with to impose your will on the wasteland? And you got commander rules there. Still definitely got to look over those a lot. Okay, and then we got the actual uh, descriptions for each. Caesar's Legion's Emperor and Mr. House President and CEO. So that's pretty cool. I, I mentioned it in my last video too, but I didn't know that these kind of came with two. Like, it, it's not just one commander. Um, you could either use Caesar or you could use Mr. House. The last one was Preston Garvey or uh, Dogman. So then you got Magic Colors. I realized it actually uh, explained the order, cooperation, protection, knowledge, control, perfection. So why are Caesar and Mr. House red, white, and black? Caesar and Mr. House are black aligned because they crave power and will do anything to maintain it. Not wrong about that. The aggressive ways in which they enforce their twisted notions or order also exemplify white and red. White and red. Emotion, chaos, rebellion, order, cooperation. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Power, death, ambition. That lines up. Cool. Actually, I like taking the time to read this. I wonder how many people actually end up reading these, too. All right, let's get this deck open. I'm just going to get a little drink. See what we got. But I'm looking forward to doing more of these. Um, I mean, like I said, I'm not going to go crazy, but I definitely want to. Anything that interests me with magic, I'm going to try to do videos on. I know I said it in the last one too. Wait, wait there it is. Uh, right now, like Modern Horizons is the big deck. Uh, or set that a lot of people are opening and checking out and today. I'm just doing Fallout. In the future, we'll do Assassin's Creed. And then if any other uh, stuff I, I get interested in, we'll do too. I also, I mentioned it last time too. I'm probably not going to be doing it at back-to-back -back like I did with this one. But I did buy a D and d uh, booster set, the Baldur's Gate one. So... That is one other one that I was interested in since it has some characters from Baldur's Gate 3 and uh, other just general D&D characters. So, but yeah, so be a lookout, be on the lookout in the future for that. Anyways, back to this. So we got the display card here for Caesar Legion's Emperor. It's a thicker one besides the others. Whenever you attack, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, choose two. Choose two? Okay. 
Create two one one red and white soldier creature tokens with haste and are, that are tapped and attacking. You draw a card and you lose one life. Oh boy. Caesar's Legion's Emperor deals damage equal to the number of creature tokens you control to target opponent. Wow. I feel like you would want to do this one and this one. Unless if you if you're really low on cards, obviously, maybe do that. But okay. Pretty cool. Put that. And here's all the tokens that you get. Kind of did this at the end last time, but we'll look over them. Soldier, soldier, warrior, warrior. Add card. How to play. Definitely going to be keeping those how to play cards close to me early on. All right. Now let's get to the actual deck here. I'll put it like this. Actually. Cool. So here's the actual cards. Caesar's Legion Mythic Hollow. Same thing. Pretty much that we just read. It's just the actual one. But there. Mr. House President and CEO. Legendary artifact creature. Hold on. Is this one a them side by side for a second so this one's a legendary creature human soldier and then he's a legendary artifact creature whenever you roll a four or higher creature a wait four or higher create oh create a three three colorless robot artifact creature token if you rolled six or higher instead create that token and a cre uh, treasure token roll six sided die plus an additional Six sided die for each mana from treasure spent to activate this ability. Okay. Alright, let's see. Oh god, Gary. Gary! <laughs> the whole Gary uh, vault squad do. An additional cost of this cast you may pay to any number of times. When this creature enters battlefield, create that many tokens that are copies of it. Whenever Gary clone attacks each creature you control, name Gary. Clone gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Gary! <laughs> Butch Deloria. Okay, Tunnel Snake. Legendary creature. Whenever Butch Deloria Tunnel Snake attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn for each rogue and or snake you control. When Menace counter on a target creature, it becomes a rogue in addition to its other types. Oh, that's kind of cool. So it specifically says, okay, yeah, it does. So he specifically is human rogue. The one thing, uh, just quick tangent. I So like I said, I've been learning magic and I've been playing a lot of uh, magic arena to try to like give me tutorials and stuff and build my own decks online. Um, but the one thing that I, I kind of upset me is that stuff like this does not get added to that game. So the cool crossovers that they do they don't have these actual Fallout decks to be able to play online. It's only the like standard ones or like Modern Horizons 3 you can play in there. Um, so I was kind of upset by that, but I mean, it is what it is. I get it. It's probably a whole licensing thing. And how I, learning how to monetize that is probably rough. But anyways, just a little thing I wanted to kind of bring up. Ruthless Rad Rat. And by the way, I'm just kind of looking over these. I mean, some of them will read, not all of them, because uh, this video would probably be like an hour and a half long if I sat here reading and talking over the entire time. But we got Craig Boone, Novak Guard. This is one of the companions I had with me during pretty much all my New Vegas playthrough, of course. Reach. Okay, so he's got Reach and Lifelink. One for my baby. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures, but two quest counters on Craig Boone. When you do, Craig Boone deals damage equal to the number of quest counters on it and up to one target creature unless that creature's controller has Craig Boone deal that much damage. Okay. Legate Le Lanius. I remember this guy. He's towards the end. Caesar's Ace. 
Whenever when Legate Lanius enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a tenth of the creature they control, rounded up. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a put a one one counter on Le Legate Lanius. White Glove Gourmand. Oh boy. When White Glove Gourmand enters the battlefield, create a two one one white human soldier creature token at the beginning of your end step. If another human died under your control this turn, create a food to Oh god. <laughs> That's very fitting there. Create a food token if a human died this turn. Here's to us. It's time we move beyond beef. Charisma bottle bobblehead. Nice. Add one. Luck bobblehead. Very similar to the bobbleheads from the last ones that we saw. Survivor's Medkit. Who's one that has been chosen? Stim pack, draw a card, fancy lad, snack cake, create a food token, rat away. Target player loses all rad counter, sacrifice survivors. Impassionable. Impassionable. Impassioned? Orator. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Kind of night. Intangible virtue. Bastion of Remembrance. Remembrance. Uh, Bastion of Remembrance enters the battlefield. Create a one, one white human soldier creature token. Whatever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Pretty good. Deadly Dispute. As an additional cost, you cast the spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature. Draw two cards and create a treasure token. Morbid Opportunist. Pitiless Plunderer. Whenever a creature you control dies, create a treasure token. General's Enforcer. That one's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, I, I really like... I mean, honestly, I like the last deck, but this one's pretty cool too. I don't know why, but a lot of like the, the black deck... I uh, really like resonate. I, I love doing like uh, I don't know sacrificing and then also like upping one upping enemies and targeting. I don't know. I, I just think they're cool. A lot of times, those are some of the the, the decks that I've played online. Anyways, uh, legendary humans you control have indestructible. Exile a target creature from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, create one one white human soldier creature token. Heroic reinforcements. More creature tokens. Whoa, what is this? Wear tear. Instant. Use. You may cast one or both halves of this card from your hand. Target. Destroy. Target artifact. Destroy. Target enchant. Interesting. It's like two cards in one. That's uh, very unique. Arcane Signet. Uh, I mean, like, I don't know how actually unique it is, but... Skull Clamp. The Machinist. Nice. Soul Ring. Talisman Conviction. Talisman Hierarchy. Talisman of Indulgence. Ash Barons. Command Tower. Oh, goes. Evolving Wilds, Memorial to Glory. That's all of them right there. Got more though. Oh, bring it, Mr. House for a ride. Put that right there. It's so weird. Like I'm not actually looking down at the uh, the cards right now. You guys can't really see it, but the way I have this set up is like that's my keyboard. My monitor is actually right here, so. I'm not actually looking down at these cards. I'm full on looking at the monitor to watch like me touch these and stuff and like open them and, and view them. And that, that way, I mean, I could look down and read it like this too, but it's honestly easier because I can bring it up to the camera and still read it rather than bringing it up to my face. Anyways, that's probably how a lot of people do these, but this is funny. Our Dash the Founder. Enlist. As this creature attacks you, you may tap 
a non-attacking creature you control without summoning si summoning sickness. When you do, add its power to this creature until the end of the turn. Whoa. Whatever creature you control attacks, if it's enlisted, a creature this enlisted, a creature this combat. The creature that attacked gains double strike until end of turn. If that creature's power is four or greater, draw a card. Sounds like it would be pretty good. Battle of Hoover Dam. As the Battle of Hoover Dam enters the battlefield, choose NCR or Legion. NCR at the beginning of your end step, return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield with a fem finality counter on it. Whenever a creature you control dies, put two one one counter on a target creature you Overseer of Vault 76. Nice. First contact. Whenever Overseer of Vault 76 or another creature with power 3 or less enters the battlefield under your control, put a quest counter on Overseer of Vault. Overseer of Vault 76. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may re remove three quest counters from among permanents you control. When you do, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control and they gain vigilance. That sounds pretty good too. What the heck? Securetron Squadron. Squad 3. Pay an additional cost to cast this spell. You may pay 3 of any number of times. When this creature enters the battlefield, create that many tokens that are copies of it. Vigilance. Whenever a creature token enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1 1 counter on Sierra Nuka's biggest fan. I ran into her a good amount of times. In four. Okay. Vault 75 Middle School. Exile all creatures with power four or greater. Yes Man Personal Securitron. Target opponent gains control of Yes Man Personal Securitron. When they do, you draw two cards and put a quest counter on Yes Man activate only during your turn. Wild card. When Yes Man leaves the battlefield, its owner creates a tap 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token for each quest counter on it. Bats. That's so cool. Like, you gotta be so creative to be able to put bats into a card. It's, I don't know. It's just, like, wild how they, they come up with these ideas. And it, it, honestly, it's so cool. It, it's really cool. Instant split second, as long as this... This spell is on stack. Players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. Choose any number of target creatures with equal toughness. Destroy the chosen creatures. Wasteland Raiders. Mysterious Stranger. Love that. Flash. When Mysterious Stranger enters the battlefield for each graveyard with an instant or sorcery card in an exile, the target instant or sorcery card from that graveyard two or more cards are exiled this way choose one of them at random and copy that's the copy without paying its mana cost Ooh. Sony has a really good like sorcery or or an instant card and it ends up there that's like perfect outer gangers okay another uh bros i saw this at the last one that's pretty cool though Real Kill Disciple. Wild Wasteland. Boomer Scrapper. <laughs> Colonel Autumn. Lifelink Exploit. When this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. Other legendary creatures you control have exploit. Whenever a creature you control exploits a creature, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Desdemona. Elder Arthur Maxson. Okay. Creature tokens you control have training. Blind Patrol. Sacrifice another creature. Elder Arthur Maxson gains indestructible until end of turn. Jeez. Kellogg. That's sick. Yeah, see, this, I'm, I'm already recognizing a lot more characters in this one than in the last. But the last one is all about uh, building up enchantments and stuff. This one seems like it's a lot more like creatures. 
McCready too? Lamplight Mayor. Yeah, McCready is in Fallout 3 at the Lamplight uh, area, and he's also a companion in Fallout 4. I had no idea that it was him for a while. Whenever a creature who controls uh, with power 2 or less attacks against Skulk until end of... Nipton Lottery. <laughs> it's so bad. It's Fallout New Vegas. The guy won the lottery, and then he, he pretty much they get killed. Choose a creature at random. Uh, you, you gain control of that creature until the end of turn. Untap it. It gains haste until the end of turn. Then destroy all other creatures. Yeah, if you win the lottery, you survive. Everybody else gets killed. Paladin Elizabeth Haggerty. Italian, whatever Paladin, Elizabeth, Taggerty, and at least two other creatures attack, draw a card. Then you may put a creature card with mana value X or less from your hand onto the battlefield. Tap. Uh, I lost the word. Yeah, I totally, where, what the heck? Oh, tapped and attacking, where X is Paladin, Elizabeth, Taggerty's power into the killing ground. Vault 11, Voter's Dilemma. ED or Eddie? I kept saying ED. To me, that is E D E, but it's Ed E. I'm pretty sure. Lonesome Ibot. Whenever you attack, if the number of attacking creatures is greater than the number of quest counters on Eddie, Lonesome Ibot put a quest counter on it. Sacrifice two, then draw an additional draw a card, and then draw an additional card for each quest. Wow, very good. Desolate Mire, Diamond City, Captain of the Watch, together, them nice and sorted, Captain of the Watch, Entrapment Maneuver, Hour of Reckoning, Keeper of the Accord, I, I actually got one of these in my, uh, the Collector Booster open this time, Martial Anthem, Martial Coup, Secure the Waste, Black Market, Lethal Scheme, Stolen Strategy, Anguished on Making, Symbol of the Legion, Fervent Charge. Whoa. That's a big cost. What the heck? Destroy all non land permanents your opponent controls. Ruinous Ultimatum. Jeez. Canyon Sloth, Cliff Top Retreat, Dragon Skull Summit. That looks sick. There's got to be a card in here that's got that mentions uh, Sierra Madre. I don't know if I already passed it, but Isolated Chapel, Shadow Blood Ridge, Smoldering Marsh, Temple of Malice, Temple of Silence, Temple of Triumph, Windbrisk Heights. My Red Landscape, Nomad Outpost, Path of Ancestry, Painted Fields, Painted Peak, Aeromorphic Expanse, and then we got the Plains, the Basic Plants. Swamp, 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 Mountain, Mountain, Mountain. Cool. Went through that pretty good it's pretty much the exact same length as the last time last video i did which is nice and like i said i this has been back to back so any feedback uh after this video i will definitely be taking into account if there is any that is i don't know how well i'm doing or how bad i'm doing or whatever the case is um like i said i plan on playing all of these so right now i'm really only going to do videos stuff that I'm interested in or stuff that I'm generally going to be using. Um, so that's the current plan with this. Uh, like I said in my last video too, I do have a lot of board games that I've collected over the last few years. So maybe at some point we'll do like a let's play of some of those too, or maybe even magic as well. But uh, for right now, I think that's going to be it for this. As always, if you guys end up enjoying this, Leaving a like on these videos helped me out a whole lot. 
any comments at all, suggestions, whatever it is, who you suggest to watch the Learn Magic. Honestly, anything at all, I'll take the feedback. And uh, for now, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.